Hello and welcome back to my channel, as today we got some AFC team rankings for 2024. If you have not seen the NFC version, I highly advise you to do that. I put a lot of work into that and it's not growing very well despite YouTube actually showing it and it getting clicked on. I don't understand. But if you could, it'd be awesome. I worked hard on it. I think it was a pretty good video. So uh, if you like this one, watch this through and then go back over there. But yeah, anyway, let's just get into AFC rankings 2024. Now, starting with the Baltimore Ravens, they were just the best team in the league. But after free agency, it wasn't the best. I mean, of course, they got the king. But once again, he's old. Like I said last year, and I was expecting him to regress, which didn't really happen. But... I'm still expecting him to start regressing, but he is still he's still pretty freaking good. But I do think adding the king is not even close to the amount of talent that they lost. I mean, we're talking guys like Patrick Queen, Jadavion Clowney, Gus Edwards, Geno Stone, Morgan Moses, John Simpson, Kevin Zeitler, just half their offensive line, and Ronald Darby. So, yeah, not not a great offseason or free agency by the Ravens, despite, you know, getting the king. But I do think their draft wasn't too shabby. As they got Nate Wiggins in the first round, which I really like that pick. I think he's going to be awesome. They also got Roger Rosengarten, which, great pick, picking up more offensive line to replace the major losses there. Um, and then also a lot of their other good picks. I do like TJ Tampa. Uh, Devontae Walker really like that one. Now, one thing about this Raven season that's going to be interesting is that they have a super, super difficult schedule. I mean, just being in the AFC North means that you're going to play every single team, no matter if it's the Steelers, the Browns, or the Bengals, you're going to play them hard, and you're probably going to split the series. So I'm thinking about probably 12, 12, maybe 13 again, but I'm thinking about 11 to 12, but definitely on the upper side of that. Now, the Buffalo Bills, it's, I mean, it's going to be definitely dependent this year on Josh Allen uh, and probably James Cook as well, because they're off, or free agency, not great. As I mean, obviously they lost Stephon Diggs, which sucks, but they did also lose guys, very important guys like Jordan Poyer, Dane Jackson, and it even extends out there as they also lost another wide receiver, Gabe Davis, which isn't great, but like, he's only kind of decent in the playoffs, but also offensive line, not great, Mitch Morse, they lost him, and also at linebacker, they lost Leonard Floyd, Terrell Dodson, and two defensive tackles in Tim Settle and Puna Ford, so really not a not a good class of losses. And for signings, they replaced them with just worse versions and not as many. As you got Curtis Samuel, Mac Hollins, KJ Hamler, not awful. I mean, just the most average to under average receiver class of all time. You know, as long as Mac Hollins isn't around Desmond Ritter, I think. It'll be decent, but their draft was absolutely perfect as they immediately met their needs uh, in the first two rounds with Keon Coleman. Love that pick, first of all. Just love the guy. Um, and also Cole Bishop. Also really love that pick. That's that's awesome. They also got another center and, you know, just more needs. So, like, very, very good draft for the Bills. And it's, it's honestly Bills going in the right direction, not improving, but definitely going in the right direction. They just seem to always be a disappointment with Josh Allen, but I think this year there's a lot less expectations. So I think this could be pretty important year for the Bills to really see who they're going to be in the future with all the young guys they're bringing in. Now, once again, the Bills have a very, very difficult schedule, and I think they're getting maybe 11, but I'm going to say 10 wins. I'm just going to be honest. They have a very tough schedule, and I don't think they're as good as other contending teams. Now, the Cincinnati Bengals, bit of a rough year last year, as they didn't even make the playoffs with the Joe Burrow injury happening. But yeah, Bengals, interesting team, but I definitely think they got better, um, as they basically just replaced everyone that they lost with, honestly, better players. As they lost Jonah Williams, but replaced him with Chet Trent Brown. They lost DJ Reader, but replaced him with Sheldon Rankins. They did lose Joe Mixon, but they replaced him with Zach Moss. And they also lost a few guys like Cheetah Bay Wuzier and Nick Scott in the defensive backfield, but they replaced him with, honestly, better guys in Von Bell and Geno Stone. As well as losing a backup tight end, they replaced him with a starting tight end in Mike Gesicki. And once again, their draft, it was, it was fine. I like it, um, as... In the first round, they did go with Amarius Mims, which it's fine, but definitely could have been better. And then the rest of the draft honestly was not too shabby, as they immediately after got Chris Jenkins, 
uh, defensive tackle and also got Jermaine Burton as their new probably number three maybe number four I don't know if they have someone else I'd forget yeah Bengals I definitely think to get better uh, and probably make the playoffs and I think they're better than AFC teams like the the Bills or other teams like that so um I guess it's just gonna be down to if Joe Burrow gets hurt again or not Bengals schedule does start out a bit rough but towards the end, it gets a bit easier, and I think they can also beat the teams uh, at the beginning of the year. So, I th I'm thinking Bengals 11 to 12, maybe 12, but I'm thinking probably more like 11, because obviously they're a very tough division, and if they win the division games, they're absolutely making the playoffs. So, yeah, I think bounce back year, but I mean, Joe Burrow got hurt, so like, whatever. So, Bengals potential Super Bowl contenders this year once again. Now, the Cleveland Browns surprising run as they started, what, five QBs the season, which is just absolutely insane. Only team to do that and make the playoffs before they did get absolutely blocked by the Houston Texans. But <laughs> moving on, uh, they had a fantastic offseason. And, you know, this is such a talented team. And they're, they got so many replacements for the guys that they lost. Like, basically, running through their losses, they lost Joe Flacco, which obviously doesn't really matter. Anthony Walker, Sion Takitaki, Harrison Bryant, and Nick Harris. And they immediately replaced him with a much better linebacker in Jordan Hicks and Devin Bush. They also made sure to get as many replacements for Nick Chubb as they got Donta Foreman and Naheem Hines, both pretty serviceable maybe starters. They also got another wide receiver in Jerry Judy, as well as a defensive tackle, Quinton Jefferson, as well as another backup for Mr. Cosby, in Jameis Winston. All around stand up, stand up quarterback room Cleveland. Absolutely lovely stuff. The draft was really not good, however, as they didn't have a lot of picks, no first round pick, um, as, yeah, it just, just wasn't great. But yeah, if Deshaun doesn't get hurt, it's going to be down to him. And if he doesn't perform, the Browns are going to have to find another quarterback soon because of how talented this team is. And their ceiling is Super Bowl, easily. And, you know, if Deshaun obviously plays like he did back in 2019, they are honestly my number one Super Bowl contenders in the AFC. For the Browns, once again, a tough schedule, but I do think they should easily get 11 wins. Now, the Denver Broncos, an interesting team under Sean Payton. Ah, uh, free agency was not great. They did lose Russell Wilson, which I'm pretty sure, aren't they, don't they still have to pay him? They probably do. They did also lose Jerry Judy, Lloyd Cushenberry, Justin Simmons, Josie Jewell, and Jonathan Harris. Just not a bunch of great losses, and they replaced him with not better replacements, you know. Uh, Calvin Throckmorton, <laughs> Brandon Jones, and... Malcolm Roach, uh, but for the draft, obviously, Bo Nix, the big name here, doesn't seem like he's gonna be that great, and with a not fantastic team, eh, I don't know, the rest of the draft went decently, however, as they got guys like Troy Franklin, really like that one, and yeah, not an awful draft, and with such a shitty defense out of literally nowhere, it's gonna be very interesting to see how they place as their offense got worse, probably, Broncos probably regressing, but I could totally be wrong. Bo Nix could be the next CJ Stroud. I think Broncos probably about 7 to 8. They landed an 8 last year, and I'm thinking probably on the latter end of that um, in the 7 category. Now, the Houston Texans coming off a surprise season with CJ Stroud. And uh, let me just say, the Texans Super Bowl window has officially opened. They made a lot of huge additions in the offseason with Daniil Hunter, Stefan frickin' frackin' Diggs, Aziz Alshair, Joe frickin' Mixon, Danico Autry. Um, but their losses, it wasn't the best, but they definitely replaced him with better. They lost like Devin Singletary, Malik Collins, Blake Cashman isn't great, Jonathan Greenard, absolutely their worst loss. And their draft wasn't too shabby as they just filled out where they need. Texans definitely focused on defensive backs in guys like Kamari Lassiter and Kalen Bullock. They also focused on the O-line, which is so important, as they already have a pretty good one, I'm pretty sure. And with, once again, coaching staff all staying after their first year last year, Texans, I'm expecting a big year out of them. The only thing that's going to stop them is injuries, I think.
Texans, again, another tough schedule, but I think they can absolutely handle it. I'm going to put them just a little bit lower than the Browns. I do think the Browns could be hovering here, but I just feel like Texans a little bit more volatile. And the Indianapolis Colts not really improved in free agency, but they definitely improved as I got Joe Flacco to back up Big Ant, and they also got Roquan Davis. But with the remaining needs that the Colts had, they beautifully filled them out in the draft taking Liatu Latu as the first defensive player off the board in the draft. Love this pick. I think it's going to work out wonderfully. And they also, got, in the next round, got Adani Mitchell. Love that pick as well. And they also just keep filling out the offensive linemen to make sure Anthony Richardson does not get hurt. You literally had this exact same thing happen last time with Andrew Luck. Just don't let it happen again, Colts, please. And I mean, with the Colts keeping a guy called Jim Bob Cooter on the team... I mean, I can only see this team going up. Now, Colts schedule starting out very, very difficult at the beginning. And it's probably not going to be a playoff berth because of how stacked the AFC is. And also with how difficult this schedule starts out. They should get like an easy, maybe even six game winning streak by the end. But oh my god, it starts out rough. Now, the Jacksonville Jaguars, good offseason. I'd say they did lose a lot of key pieces. Like Calvin Ridley, Rayshon Jenkins, Foley Fatukasi, Darius Williams, Clavon Chason. But they did replace him in Gabe Davis, Darnell Savage, Ronald Darby, Eric Armstead. That's a pretty good one. Uh, Devin Duvernay as well. And their draft also went pretty well. They filled out a lot of needs that they need. Especially like Brian Thomas. I really, really like that pick. And just other places that they needed. I think they did a fantastic job. And they could really go anywhere from 8 to 9 wins. And I mean, if Trevor Lawrence is motivated by money, he... He will become a top five quarterback because of how much freaking money they got him. And honestly, I think I'm probably just going to put them down at eight. It's just a tough schedule, and I don't really believe in the Jaguars as much as I do in, like, the Colts. Now, the Kansas City Chiefs. I personally don't know if the three-peat is happening. It's so possible. It's so possible. I mean, they still got Pat, so, like, they could just win a Super Bowl whenever they feel like, really. This is absolutely dynasty. The free agency, however, for the just this year, it was really just awful. I mean, just a terrible free agency by the Chiefs. They lost Legereus Sneed, Donovan Smith, Willie Gay uh, Jr., Mike Edwards, Marquez Valdez-Scantling, and Nick Allegretti. And they only gained Hollywood Brown and Irv Smith and Carson Wentz. Just... Yeah, but she was absolutely impeccable draft. Xavier Worthy, the fastest guy to ever officially go through the combine. Uh, other than that, Jared Wiley tight end could be a good replacement for draft. And with this team definitely getting worse, in my opinion, I have Patrick Mahomes, so like the only way that they're gonna like not make the playoffs is if he gets injured. And this team never really feels like doing good or what they should be doing in the regular season, you know? They're, they're just slackers. They save their energy to absolutely beat the shit out of everyone in the postseason. Now, the Las Vegas Raiders. At this point, they don't have a quarterback besides Gardner Minshew because of, you know, the draft. And every, <laughs> every quarterback off the face of the earth was drafted in, like, the first, like, 12 picks. So, free agency wasn't the best. I mean, they did add, you know, Christian Wilkins. Absolutely love Christian Wilkins to death. Also, like, Alexander Madison. But, like, eh, eh, the losses definitely outweigh that as they lost one of their big three in Josh Jacobs, Amik Robertson, Bilal Nichols, Austin Hooper, Jerry Tillery. Just eh, not, not great. And once again, going into the draft with the need of a quarterback, offense lineman, and cornerback, they went with Brock Bowers. Number one, if you didn't know, last year they just drafted Michael Myers, I believe in the first round as well, and he was awesome. He was a great rookie tight end, and they just drafted a much better one. Technically good for them, but like at the same time it's not because they could have used that pick for better when they already had a young tight end. It just doesn't make any sense, and they definitely did help out the offensive line with Jackson Powers Johnson and DJ Glaze as well as other needs like, you know, running back where they got Dylan Lube. But yeah, a bunch of DBs and linebackers other than that. But yeah, Raiders not going great, except for their head coach, Antonio Pierce. Raiders have a decently difficult schedule. It's not too hard, not too bad. But once again, they're not a great team. I'm expecting probably something like that, probably behind the Jags above the Broncos. Now, the Los Angeles Chargers. This is... The beginning of a brand new era of Chargers football, obviously with the hiring of big old Jim Harbaugh and also Greg Roman coming in, which I think is fantastic. Coaching, finally not going to be a problem, but the 
team surrounding Justin Herbert is not great. I mean, they lost Austin Eckler, Keenan Allen, Mike Williams, Kenneth Murray, Eric Kendricks, Gerald Everett. Yeah, that's just basically their whole offense gone, besides offensive line. And they didn't really replace them. I mean, they got Bradley Bozeman, Denzel Perryman, Christian Fulton, Will Disley, Hayden Hurst, and Gus Edwards, but like, still not great. And they still went into the draft with a need for like, offensive tackle, wide receiver. And look at who the first two picks were. Mr. Joe Alt, who I think, I think a lot of people think he could absolutely be the next Joe Thomas. Uh, but then also Lad McConkey, also fantastic name. Just love the stuff. Uh, they also got Brendan Rice and Cornelius Johnson. Brendan Rice? Maybe the next Jerry- no, he's not the next Jerry Rice. Chargers definitely, I think, could find success. I just don't know if they will. I, I mean, they have a decently easy schedule, but it, I think for now I'm going to take the safe bet with 7 to 8 and more like 8. I could definitely see them getting 9, but it's definitely going to come down to big old Jim, Jimothy Harbaugh. Now, the Miami Dolphins really just had a at free agency, if I'm being honest, as they lost Christian Wilkins, Deshaun Elliott, Xavier Howard, Andrew Van Ginkle, Jerome Baker, Robert Hunt, and a few other guys. I mean, just a lot of great players that they ended up losing. They did a decent job of replacing those guys specifically in free agency, as they got Kendall Fuller, Aaron Brewer, Jordan Poyer. Uh, Jordan Brooks definitely really liked that one, as well as Jonu Smith. The draft, however, went decently, I'd say. Uh, Chop Robinson, definitely like that one. I think he's gonna be pretty good. I mean, with a name like Chop Robinson, you don't really have a choice to be bad. You just, you're just legally forced to be good at whatever you do. I don't know. Dolphins, again, either going to be just outside of the playoffs because of the crazy AFC, or a first round loss to the Bills, wild card. So, pick your poison. And I don't know, I really don't know if the Dolphins can make nine wins. I think at a minimum they're going to, because I mean, it's still a fairly talented team. You know, outside of Tua, Tyreek, and Jalen. I'll probably put the Dolphins slightly ahead of the Colts. Now the Patriots, another not really good team at all. Uh, as you know, the, the dynasty is officially over as the last piece, Big Bill. Moving on to the football afterlife, also known as commentating. Gerard Mayo, he's just been a linebackers coach for them for like half a decade, so the linebackers are gonna be good, so I guess that's that's fun. They lost Devontae Parker, but they definitely replaced him with someone that I think is better in KJ Osborne. But other than that, they lost Trent Brown, Mike Gesicki, Jalen Mills, Mac Jones! Oh no, not Mac Jones! Um, as other additions like Antonio Gibson, not awful, but I mean, they still have like Ramondre C Stevenson. And the draft really wasn't too bad as they got obviously Drake May. Yeah, I, I really don't know. They also got another quarterback in the later rounds, Joe Milton. That could be good. I don't, I don't know, dude. Um, they also got Jalen Polk. That could be, that could honestly be a, um, franchise guy for them if he's good with Drake May, but I don't know. You work the quarterback, you just don't know. Patriots also have a very tough schedule, and I'm expecting to land about where they did. Maybe a game increase, maybe a game decrease, but about like five wins, I'd say. Now the New Jersey Jets made absolute sure that Aaron Rodgers will not get hurt again. Well, no, they're still playing Leonard Floyd, week one, primetime, uh, Oh, dear God, NFL, why again? Really? Oh, Jesus Christ. The only thing that they did was massively improve the offensive line with guys like Tyrone Smith, Morgan frickin' Moses, and John Simpson. Uh, and then they also got, obviously, Mike Williams. Pretty good. And once again, in the draft, Jets making sure that Mr. Rogers is safe as they got Olu Fashanu. Uh, to finish out their 2024 offensive line. Love that pick for them. Also got a wide receiver after that in Malachi Corley. Also like that one. They also got the youngest player in the NFL who has been alive the same amount of time that Aaron Rodgers has been in the NFL. Yes, sir, that is Braylon Allen, Wisconsin product. Go Badgers. Now for the Jets, it's all going to come down to how well they play their division, also known as the Dolphins and the Bills. Now, this prediction is purely based off of if Rodgers plays, and I, I think he will. I mean, of course, I don't know for certain if he will or not. Um, obviously, he's going to be healthy for it, but I don't know if he's going to play well. I mean, after a year, after a serious injury for like a 40-year-old, isn't he at like 42 or something now? 
like a 40 year old quarterback coming off uh, after a serious injury. I don't know if he's still going to be the Pro Bowler Hall of Famer that we know. Now the Pittsburgh Steelers. Uh, oh man, Steelers just incredible offseason. Starting with the losses, however, they did lose Kenny Pickett. Why did the Eagles pick him up? I don't no. Deontay Johnson, not great. Mitch Trubisky, who the hell cares? And a bunch of other guys that you can very easily replace, but they absolutely improved other than that with signings like, obviously, out the aforementioned Wilson and Fields, but also Patrick Queen, stolen from the Ravens. Also, Dante freaking Jackson, bro. And then Quez Rockins, Dean Lowry, Deshaun Elliott, Van Jefferson. Just a lot of good, solid players to improve the offense, to vastly improve the defense, which is already like top five, top three, whatever it was. Like this is going to be a top three unit, which is scary. That's very, very scary. And in the draft, they only improved at the places that te that they technically needed, like offensive line with Troy Fatanu and Zach Frazier in the first two rounds. This got Roman Wilson. I think that could be a great future pick. And they also filled out other needs not really, but I mean kind of, other linemen and other linebackers. Steelers, I think, could absolutely make the playoffs. I mean, they drug Kenny Pickett to the frickin' playoffs last year. Like, how? And now they got, like, solid quarterback. Now the Steelers, I think, could absolutely be super competitive. I'm thinking right next to the Bills, about 9 to 10 wins. I doubt 11, that'd be crazy. But, I mean, their schedule is tough, man. Now the Titans, I do definitely think, got better. They did lose a lot of talent uh, in Derrick Henry, Aziz Alshair, Aaron Brewer, Danico Autry, Sean Murphy Bunton, and Kevon Wallace. But they replaced him with better, if not like the same level of players, and a lot more of them, in luxurious freaking Sneed, Calvin Ridley, Tony Pollard, I'll get to that in a second, Lloyd Cushenberry, Chidabe Awuzie, Kenneth Murray. And Sadiq Charles, and I, th I think it's, it's awesome free agency. It's going to be interesting to see how Derek does, and I think he's probably just going to produce a very similar uh, to what Tony Pollard does. It's just going to be, you know, up to the Mayo man how much he, uh, how well he's able to pass, um, all that stuff. But yeah, absolutely improved in free agency. And in the draft, they also did very well as well as number seven overall. Overall, they got J. C. Latham. Latham, don't know how that's gonna work out, but I think it could absolutely be good. Tavondre Sweat, I think, is gonna be so good for them, and a lot of defensive backs. They didn't really fill out safety, but I think, you know, Jarvis Brownlee, who they picked, number 146, could maybe be safety. They also got another wide receiver, just, you know, because Traylon Burks is definitely not working out for uh, what, he was <laughs> what, he, what he was traded for. Thanks, Titans. And there's definitely a lot of potential for this team, but I don't know how much it's going to be this year. They could absolutely get eight wins, because I do think they can beat a lot of these teams in this category, but I don't know if they will, and I think I'm going to take the safe bet by putting them further down. I mean, mm, I don't know, man. This is a tough one. But about seven, eight, I'll, see, I'll just put them in the middle, because I'm expecting like about seven to eight, because I mean, they could definitely beat some teams, I think. It's going to come down to Will Levis, but I think I think he can with a great defense. Uh, Tony Pollard right there. I think absolutely. But anyway, thank you so much for watching. This is going to take me a long time. I'll just finish recording, obviously, so uh, it's going to take me a long time to edit. Uh, please go watch the NEC version. Still, again, don't understand why it's not doing well, but uh, go watch that right now after this one. So, yeah, uh, AFC clearly a lot more stacked than the NFC. Um, a lot more changes could happen. Any of the 7 to 8 teams could go up to like 9 and 10. Any of the 11 to 12 could go down to like 9 and 10. All of the 9 and 10 teams can switch any place here. So, yeah, I guess that's it. So I'll see you next time.